Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, for your Patreon cast for the week of January the 30th, it's gonna be Jadong vs. Perfect Man here on Icarus. Top side of Icarus, we've got ourselves Jadong, and on the bottom side, we have Perfect Man. Perfect Man is a very, very good Protoss player. He gives Jadong everything he can handle, he's beat him before, he's lost to him before. And I kind of feel like he's a, uh, because he's a practice partner of Jadong in this era of StarCraft, 2008 or so, that gives him insight into what Jadong is going to do in this matchup, and maybe that's an advantage that gives him the edge to, to beat Jadong, all right? Ah, all right. So, Icarus, a very weird map. It's, I don't know, it's not symmetrical? Maybe it is? I don't know, it is, but it doesn't look like it, right? You have all these weird skew lines, we've got uh, expansions with gas, with a little ramp leading up to it, which is really easy to fend. So third bases are easy to take here, and once again, just narrow ramps leading up to every single expansion on this map. So I kind of feel like it's Zerg favored, right? There we go. We'll have to see. Hatch first in it. Here is Jadong at 12 supply. Right on time. And a Forge Fast Expand here from Perfect Man. Maybe he's going to cancel the Forge when he sees the hatch first. No? Nope, going to let it finish. Okay, just being safe. You can do a Nexus first against a Hatch first as Protoss and be very, very safe, but... I don't know, Perfect Man's a better player than I am, so we'll go ahead and allow him to finish that Forge. And save up for a Nexus after the Forge. <laughs> Probe Harassin? You know, just making use of his 350 APM. Pretty normal stuff here, and there's the 400, and there's the Nexus, a little bit later on it. Not perfectly timed getting that probe down to this location, but that's okay. Got some good overlords placements out here, trying to see if there's any weird proxy stuff happening. If there's any zealots coming across the map because he doesn't know. He hasn't scouted anything that Perfect Man is up to. There's your gateway. So yeah, the fact that there's the hatch first means you don't have to get a cannon up. If it was a pool first or an overpool, then yeah, absolutely. Get that cannon in there, defend against the early link pressure. But with the hatch first, no, you don't have to worry about that at all. Gateway coming in. Nexus coming in. Just don't have to worry about defense for a little bit longer here. Probe wants to know how many links are going to be produced now that the pool is finished, and the answer is actually zero. There have been zero Zerglings produced, nor are there any in the production tab at all. And there's a quick third base. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Ooh, at this spawn location too. So yeah, low grounding it here against Protoss as is tradition. You get the third base here. Your fourth base is going to be here in that spawn location on this four-player map. And then a fifth base is pretty easy to take as well. So I'm curious to see if Jadong's going to go for a pretty, like, really, really solid macro-style thing here or what. Hmm. Should be interesting. Nevertheless. Do -do 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 -do. And there's your cannon, because you are worried about Zerglings, but by golly, Jadong has not made any. Uh, zero Zergling opening going for a lair. I mean, he's basically just scouted the fact that there's really not much reason to worry about the Protoss player either. So both players being very greedy. 21 probes to 17 drones, and that's really only because drones have to get sacrificed to make buildings. So every building you see, one, two, three, three of them, right? Four. Four of them are drones that should exist, and we'd be closer to even, right? That's how it works with Lizerg. Overlord gonna go for the scout on in, see what's up inside. The main base, it is a Stargate opening from Perfect Man. Nothing too crazy there. And so far, I'd say everything's fine. Finally, two sets of lings do pop out from Jadong. There's more lings coming in here too, which indicates aggression, but I don't think that's really necessary. Maybe to defend the third base against its coming attacks, but there's one Zealot here. There's a Dragoon on the way. This is very, very interesting. Zergling coming across the map. 
So two zealots holding with a cannon behind it should be able to handle these links. I'm really shocked at this from Jadong that he's making this attempt. This is risky. If this doesn't work for him and he ends up losing all these links for nothing. <sighs> I don't like it. Yeah, so the Dragoon, maybe put the Dragoon back behind the zealot. There you go. Zealots are better at attacking and dealing with lings than dragoons are but the damage output from the dragoon is nothing to sneeze at either i don't like it i think jadong should have more drones at this stage i think he could have gotten away with having a few more drones here at the third base or at the natural base he's getting a spire here too these lings aren't accomplishing anything at all i mean this is just jadong like i said risking it to make this many lings and i just don't think it's going to pay off for him he's like well i'll block this attempt at maybe a third location that Perfect Band was trying to get, but now he can't, ha ha ha, because there's Zerglings here, but this should be economy. I mean, that is just a rule for Zerg players. If you're going to make this much army early, it's got to do something. It has to defend you from a huge attack that you survive, or it has to be aggressive and start killing stuff. And if it doesn't do any of those things, then making this many lings early is a total waste. I mean, it doesn't mean that Jedang is going to lose this game or anything, but he is... He's really got to be droning here to catch up, and he is. He's making four drones at a time. He's down 25 to 36 workers, which is fine. I mean, it's not ridiculously bad or anything. It's fairly normal. And a lurker aspect, getting research tier two. Spire is just going to be for a handful of Scourge to deal with the Corsair that has been cruising around trying to find overlords to kill. And there's one. You already got one kill, maybe a second, but also worried about Scourge showing up and killing him. So the Corsair is just going to keep moving. To double. Oh, making three Corsairs, actually. And speed for Zealots. And now we're pushing out. See, this is when you start making the Zerglings. Not two minutes ago. So the Lings are going to try to buy some time. They're going to go ahead and surround this dra poor Dragoon. Just locked in there with those Zerglings surrounding. Doing a little bit of SimCity here at the third base. Creep Colony into a sunken and same thing here at the main. Not quite sure where these Zealots will go. But it's going to be a bunch of them. We're producing them two at a time. A Temple Archives is coming in here. Very nice. I like that too. Corsairs trying to see if any more, or rather, uh, Scourge are trying to see if any more Corsairs are being produced. And yeah, here comes the attack. So here come Los Zalotes. Going to try to take down the third base. The Scourge are scouting this. They see it. So there's two Sunkins, and there's a bunch of Lings here, and immediately producing more drones. Wow. So Jadon feels like he can handle this no problem. Got a couple Hydras popping out here, too. Hydras in the back. Like, Dragoons in the back, Hydras in the back, right? So Hydras in the back, maybe, but no. Sitting at the front, interestingly enough. Corsair still cruising. Still cruising around. And, yeah, that's good. I mean, the army's heading up to the natural base now, but where there's two Sunkins here as well. But no Lurkers and no Hydralisks here either. The Zealots need to choose. Oh, there is a Lurker now. Oh, Lurker's just popping. And that's going to force the Zealots to back off. These two are going to go for scouting harassment, but the other four are going to bail. They're just going to get out of their hardcore. So, Zealots, we're going to kill as many drones as we can. Going to force drones off the mining at least temporarily. Another drone killed. This is why we like Perfect Man. He's good. He's just good at harassment. His macro is excellent. And the reason I'm casting this in particular is because somebody on the YouTube channel said we need to see more Perfect Man. And I was like, you know what? You're right. We do need to see more Perfect Man. Accurate statement. So that's where we are. So Lurker's going to try to set up at the front here and just get some spines off from time to time. Lurker burrows in. Lurker burrows in. Ah! Archon taking some hits, but not like bonus damage from Lurkers or anything like that. Do we have the ability to make observers yet? We have a robotics facility. And we are making an observatory, but yeah, this Lurker pressure is pretty mean stuff for the time being. So this little Zelda Archon thing is now going to move on over to the third base, where there are Hydras here to defend. Hydras and Sunken's going to be enough to deal with this. At least Perfect Man thinks so because he's backing out too. Storm is on the way. That's going to change the game as all spells do. Dark Swarm and Psionic Storm change ZVP immensely. Scourge here holding position and then they get obliterated by Corsairs because they're just kind of holding position. So here's your third base attempt, but oh, it's a naked expand attempt here and these lanes are going to take down this cannon. Well, they would have, but their friends show up to make it even more of a shellacking. Corsair is trying to get some more stuff done. I'm not sure if they paid for themselves here today. 
Oh, he unloads lurkers on the high ground. That is such a mean. That is a mean thing to do here on Icarus. Oh, this is so mean to do here on Icarus. It's something the Zerg players love, and I totally forgot about it until now. You can put tanks up here too, which is why we don't see a lot of Terran on this map. It's mostly PVZ. <laughs> lurkers, this is bad enough. But putting a siege tank up here is just like. Ugh. I hate everything if you're down here and expanded in this location. So, I don't know. Workers are doing fine. They're not, like, ending the game or anything. They just killed a couple probes. They're going to get stormed. It does take two storms to kill a lurker, so that is a lot of energy usage to kill a single lurker. Uh, you know, this High Templar could die if this lurker focused on it. It's in a weird position. It probably needs to be... Yeah. Oh, never mind. Lurker takes it down. All right. Meanwhile, more Lurker Hydra stuff inside the main base here. Hydra's going to try to focus down a single cannon. They get it. Nice. Zealots are trying to clear this thing up, but they don't have any... Oh, they do have protection. An observer just shows up. And he manages to clear that one out there, too. So nicely done by Perfect Man. He's going to lose a bunch of stuff here. His probe count is down to 42. 50 drones. Not good. Not good for Perfect Man. Also, more Lurker drops. Dude, the drops here from Jadong are absolutely sick. This third base is in a bit of a lot of trouble. Yeah, this is not looking good for Perfect Man uh, Protoss fans. He, again, he's got wins, but this is just incredible amounts of harassment. He doesn't have enough High Templar to storm this one again. And as a result, he loses an Assimilator. He loses a couple more probes. This is brutal. Brutality. And he's going to let this finish, but he really needs to do something here. Did he bring an Observer along with these Zealots? He must have. Where is it? Here it is. Coming in from the right side of your screen and now the lurkers are going to die and the zealots are going to win so all right fair enough this nexus is very injured though and very prone to some kind of like a hydro lurker drop could be problematic you're still just trying this lurker stuff which i mean are you seriously coming with more yeah it's like you still haven't dealt with this lurker on the high ground at your natural i'm gonna bring some more lurkers over how's that sound perfect man's like no please this totally sucks. Gonna unload... Okay, unloads a Zealot in here to try to fight, but, I mean, there's also multiple... Multiple Lurkers here now. Your plan was executed a little bit too late, unfortunately. Macro hatch. Yeah, I just don't... I do not see a path forward here for Perfect Man. We have a bit to... We have a while to go here, obviously. It's not GG now, but... Whatever happens next, I will not be... I will be surprised. He's trying to micro his way into keeping that shuttle alive, and he does. Fancy micro there. Argon's got four kills. Not bad. But yeah, this is the fourth base. Jadong's take. We, talk, we talked about this. And remember what I said about some kind of a Hydra drop? This is what I'm talking about. Hydra Lurker drop kills a third base. A perfect man. He is bleeding hard now. Only 38 probes to 58 drones. is just an absolute brutal position to be in at 13 minutes. Especially against Jadong. Adrenal Glands is coming in. I'm gonna make Link so much better against Zealots and still even better against Dragoons. Nice Observer Snipe, okay. So that said, storming the Lurkers is pretty effectively getting rid of them. Second Storm gets rid of that guy too. So the Lurkers were the only hope. The Hiders were going to die, but they get cleared out very nicely. And a Storm Drop, hey, two can play at this game says perfect man i'm gonna kill a bunch of your drones so down to 53 drones here but still only 40 probes and this overlord tries to escape and the corsair group gets rid of that so the corsair group is still pretty strong that can be a nice way to come back here in the mid game is if your corsairs are just killing overlords like crazy you haven't lost them to a huge group of scourge or hydralisks yet yeah 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 sunken sunken hatch hatch everything is doing great Perfect Man needs a third base. I think he's trying to double expand, maybe. Expand to that original third base location and then expand here, too. Which, okay. Those wings did not get a lot done, despite having the Adrenal Gland upgrade. Third base getting replanted. We're gonna get some cannons at the front here to deal with incoming land attacks. Again, a drop right here would be pretty effective once again for Jadong. He's trying to get some more storm droppage here at the uh, natural base. Again, definitely more annoying... Oh, man. So he's pushing the third base while storm dropping the gnat. Oh, good hits there. Great hits there. And he gets the pickup and gets evacuated. So this was distraction. Not you know, 57 workers for Tanong. He's lost some drones, but he's okay is the trick here. He's doing just fine, thanks. 
He's still up 10 workers against Perfect Man. Perfect Man's third base, sure, is happening. Fourth base, maybe. Scourge can tell that's being attempted at the very least. Oh, Scourge did take down this shuttle. High Templar's still alive. Not enough energy for a storm and therefore moderately useless to the Protoss here. So it's 126 to 122 supply. Perfect Man is holding on. He's doing his very best here. Plague's getting researched from Jadong, though, once we have Plague out. Oh, going for the drop. But, of course, Sarahs are here to kill the Overlord. They can't kill them fast enough. Before they unload, Dark Swarm gets tossed down. Storm immediately thrown into the Dark Swarm. Zealot trying to hold it. No, Lings with the Adrenal Gland take him down very easily. This Lurker is still alive. Ugh. And then trying to expand here is Perfect Man, but he can't deal with the drop. Inside his main base, his Citadel of a Dune gets killed. High Templar are popping out of star uh, warp gates and getting obliterated there to these gateways, bringing High Templar into high danger positions. Well, he does manage to get one storm off and kill all those uh, lings, which is awesome stuff. He's got his third base rolling. His fourth base is now warping in. All right. All right, all right. It might come down to this kind of an attack, like on the third base or some such. That's entirely possible here. Man, Minisynaptic Node, Ultralisk Cavern coming in. Ah, Plague ooh, on Perfect Man's army. He was like, I could do this, but no. If you've been plagued, it changes all of the math in that situation. Defiler, not even, no sense of self-preservation there. One, uh, 114 to 143 supply. As a Protoss player, as a Terran player against a Zerg, you gotta kill bases. You just have to kill bases. If you're not killing bases against a good Zerg player, against a great Zerg player like Jadon, you're just not going to win the game the longer the game goes on. Nice pickup, getting that drone, keeping it alive. And then just casually unloading into this fourth base of Perfect Man and being like, yo! I'm just gonna kill this with a handful of links. No, says Perfect Man and does manage to save it, which is good. And again, Kind of trying to push up here. God, these zealots, have they been plagued? No, actually, they're doing all right. They got plus three attack, plus two armor, and plus one attack here for, oop, for the lings, but also the drop coming into the third base. Dark Swarm Ling shenanigans here. The zealots really shouldn't care about it, but they also can't engage on their own, and they know. So the third base is going to die for the second time. This attack into the third base of Jadong is not going well, and that's your GG. Perfect Man taps out. <laughs> Sky leaves the game. He was watching too. And Jadong's your winner in 17 minutes and 52 seconds. So that was a bit of a tough go. A tough go of it <laughs> when it comes here to Perfect Man. Jadong just, he was able to get a third base up. Never took much damage at it. Never took much damage at his natural base either. So, eh, everything's fine. Like, this was one of the smoothest Zerg versus Protoss wins I've ever seen. He just, he never lost a base. He was able to kill the third base of Perfect Man twice. The fourth base was delayed as a result, and it was just too much Zerg. The drops were disgusting, too. Like, this is the power of Zerg with drops. The number of times we see Protoss just crush Zerg where Zerg doesn't get drops is way higher than if Zerg gets drops. It just changes everything. This is a really good map for drops, obviously. I mean, that was something that Jadong focused on very early, getting lurkers onto this high ground position on the Nat. But even on other maps, if you're dropping onto bases rather than trying to attack them from the front... Or trying to, uh, you know, engage with the army just on the open playing field, you're going to have a better time. Drops are very strong. Recalls are good. Drops are good from uh, drop ships from Terran, too. It's just drop is a good ability that Zerg players could stand to use more, I think. I mean, it's honestly, it's pretty powerful, right? You spend 200, 200. Every one of your overlords turns into a drop ship at that point. It's basically getting infinite drop ships for 200, 200. Who would say no to that? Not me. I mean, I guess Arbiters can do recalls, but that costs energy, and I guess you can use them over and over again, but you know what I'm talking about here. Didn't have to use the Ultralisks either. Was getting Kindness Plating, but just mostly Zergling Hydra Lurker today, and just being in places where Perfect Man was not quite there and ready to defend against it. So just cannot ask for more there from Jadong. That's why he's the boss. 99,000 points there for Jadong, 81,000 for Perfect Matt. Well, perfect man. His name kind of gets cut off here. Outproduce 400 to 150, which is not generally that bad of a deal. 
Uh, and then killed 84 to 148. So you'll notice the 4 to 1 discrepancy here in produced, and the killed is only basically a 2 to 1. Uh, actually, less than that for Perfect Man. So there's your math, if you're interested in math reasons. Why <laughs> Perfect Man lost this game. Also this, zero Zerg buildings died. That's crucial if you're trying to win a game as a Zerg. You're not losing any buildings as a huge metric. And then outspent the Protoss opponent, Jadong did, by uh, about 8,000 resources, which is good enough. Good enough in 17, 18 minutes. So GG. And that is going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered and a Patreon cast. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.